So this year has been an interesting one. I'm sure you would agree with me that um, this has been like no other. For you, I'm sure for your family, uh, for those of you who are online, I want to welcome you to a portion of our Dream Team Summit. We are doing a little state of the church time right now. And I want to just share my heart with you for a few minutes about where we are and, and about what God has done, about, about some of the things that we're facing and about what we know is going to get us through and why we're so passionate about the things that God has called us to. I believe this, I believe that we are entering a new phase of our journey. And I've been thinking a lot about that passage in the Old Testament where Joshua leads the children of Israel out of the wilderness and into the promised land because it was such a transition, because they had been in such chaos and such unknown day to day, wondering where they were supposed to go, what they were supposed to do, a little bit aimless, always longing for a breakthrough but not seeing it. Does that sound familiar for the last year for you? And, and so I think even as a church, I think God has brought us into some interesting times. He's always been here with us, but I feel like we're kind of at the, uh, at the Jordan River. Don't want to be over dramatic, but I think we're kind of in some ways at the Jordan River, like looking at what might be on the other side of this. We've never been there. We don't know what it's going to feel like or look like, but I do think this. I do think this. I think a year from now, we're going to be asking ourselves the question, Am I satisfied personally, individually, with how I've lived the last 12 months? I think a year from now, we're all gonna be asking ourselves the question because I think this is a really special time. I think we're gonna be asking ourselves questions like this. Do I have a deeper connection with my, my, my Lord and Savior? I think we're gonna be asking ourselves the question, is my crew stronger than it's ever been? I think we're gonna be asking ourselves the question, am, am I leveraging my life for the mission that God has given me, the, the, the capital R reason why I'm here on earth. Am I leveraging my life? I think we're gonna be looking back at our lives, asking ourselves those questions. And so uh, I, wanna, I wanna walk you through this. Here's this verse, Joshua 3, 5. Joshua is, is talking to the Lord and he says, tell him this, Josh. He says, tell him, purify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. I love that. Purify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord's gonna do great wonders among you. I mean, imagine if you knew that tomorrow there's gonna be a huge breakthrough and God's like, hey, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get your spiritual life ready. Get your personal life ready. Get your marriage life ready. Get your family life ready. Get your financial life ready. Get, your, get, get ready because tomorrow God's gonna do something great among you. And I wonder if, if, if Josh had been like, well, you've said that a lot of times and the CDC keeps on blah, blah, blah. And you know, <laughs> And, but he didn't do that, and, and aren't you glad? Because we're, 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 we have such a legacy like Joshua looked back at, a hero to go, that's how you do it. And I wanna encourage you to be that. So here's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about what God has done, where we wanna go and why, what's standing in our way and how we're gonna move forward. So I wanna talk about what God has done in our church in the last year. He's brought us through, that's what he's done. And from March 2020 onward, so many wonderful things have happened, tough times, tough struggles, I have not known what I was doing a single day of the last year. Uh, <laughs> that's the truth. And, uh, and so God has just helped us, you know, and one little step at a time. And we've messed up and we've made mistakes and we've, you know, gone backwards, but we keep getting up and we keep trying again and we keep learning. And I think that's the most important thing. We made that move to digital that we talked about. How huge leap for us, huge, huge leap for us. And, uh, and still, as you might know, that even like as we're bumbling our way into streaming, it's, it's so much of a learning curve, right? But God has helped us to do this. Um, one of the things I'm so excited about is we've been planting churches. We started COVID planting churches, and we haven't stopped. And I'm so excited about that. We got a chance to plant Bedrock Community Church. Uh, it was one of our campuses. We planted Bedrock. Bedrock is a church now in our, in our area. It's got a unique approach, a unique leader, a, you know, a unique vision. And a, a, and a sold out group of people that are passionate about the gospel. We planted Epic Life Church, was our Tannisborn campus. And uh, man, God is doing great things through Mike and Sandy Martindale and that whole crew up there. Uh, we were part of the core key team for Generations Church in Vancouver, Washington. We think Generations Church was the first truly 
multi-network collaborative church plant in, in the Portland area in, in a, ever or a long, long, long time. And we got to be a part of having our hands on it. It's been so good. That church is going gangbusters. They're double their pre-COVID in-person attendance. They are uh, rocking it with outreach and online ministry, and they're so, so healthy. The truth is we've learned more from Generations Church than we've invested, and we've invested a lot. And so it's been so fun for that. One of the cool things about all this is we got a chance to start something called the Together Network. That's our new family of churches. Started out with Epic Life, Bedrock, and Westside, and lately it's been six, seven, eight churches hanging out, talking about how could we together, you know, make a bigger difference. And so God's doing some really neat stuff there that I really love and we wanna celebrate. You know, like in, in a time when we weren't sure what was gonna happen to the economy, we weren't sure if we were gonna have a church, we didn't know what was gonna happen, God did all this stuff and we're really grateful. And I, that's not all. This is like an infomercial. And that's not all. <laughs> Our global partnerships are still intact. We have not missed one dollar of support since COVID started for our global partnerships around the world in Indonesia, in Mexico, in Guatemala, and all around the world. And every single month we have, whether it felt comfortable or not, we have made those payments. We have sent that money. We have sent those prayers. We have, we have connected with those leaders. We've checked on those leaders because we believe that God has given us a partnership that, is supposed to, that has a purpose. And, and we want to make that happen. We, uh, we, we did this thing called All In. Do you guys remember All In? All In was a two-year uh, journey of really discipleship. And it had all these components, spiritual growth, all this stuff had a financial component. The financial component helped us upgrade our facilities here, which has been fantastic. One of the biggest things we did during COVID was go through with the remodel and the upgrade of the campus, even while I was like, guys, I don't know if this is a good idea. This seems really stupid. I don't know. Like, it seems like the sky is falling and we're going to do a remodel on our, on our facility. But we just said, let's just, let's just do it. Maybe God brought this together for a reason. And now what we know is, I'm so glad because we needed a facility that was ready because what we know about people now is that if something looks unkept, it's considered unclean and we won't go there and we won't bring our kids there. Isn't that right? And so we're super proud and super thankful that God had that in, in store. But that was, I would say that's the icing on the cake. The cake of All In was the discipleship, was what God did in moving us forward spiritually because people took steps of faith to start reading their Bible, to get into a group, to start serving, to find out what their spiritual gift is, to start giving. I, I talked to so many people who started giving during All In and they were like, I can't believe this. And I'm like, what? Like the idea that God is my provider and that I can give and he really does return more than I gave and, I, and I'm watching it happen. This is absolutely amazing, you know? Nothing stretches and builds your faith like that. So God has done so many wonderful things and we're really, really great, grateful. We've also seen our reach continue to evolve. <laughs> and I wanna talk a little bit about our reach, okay? Our on-site reach right now is at 40% of our pre-COVID Sunday in-person attendance here at this location. And while I don't know if that's encouraging or discouraging to you, but actually, nationally, we're a little bit ahead of the curve, and I'm excited about that. Um, so I think that deserves uh, thanks to God for that, yeah. Um, we have roughly 300 people are showing up on a Sunday altogether right now, and we know that's gonna to continue to climb as things open up, as people get a little more comfortable, and as people get a little more intentional now about their faith. I think that being in person, being face-to-face -face has an important role in our faith. Um, I also acknowledge that our online reach has been so important and will continue to be. And so our online reach is right now, currently, we, don't, we measure devices because we don't know how to do it otherwise. So this is what we've been measuring since we started. 750 to 1,000 devices a week typically engage in our video content online. Now that doesn't mean that they're there the whole time. And so what we've learned is there's different categories, there's different purposes for different platforms. So what we see is Instagram has a purpose, Facebook has a purpose, YouTube has a purpose, Church Online has a purpose. And so we're starting to change. That's why we're streaming now. It's because we realize that we're streaming to people who weren't interested in a one hour thing. And so they're interested in a two minute thing. So what we're gonna start doing is going, great, let's put some two minute things out there. Let's, let's put some 60 second things out there. Let's put some hooks in the water that might lead people to a deeper commitment with Church Online. 
or a deeper commitment with an online group or deeper commitment with on-site services. And so the whole idea for us is moving people. That's what we're in the people moving business, you know? That's what we do, and we wanna keep doing that. Right now, this year, here's a cool thing. We've seen 21 baptisms to date this year, 18 of those on one Sunday. And I don't know if you were here for that Sunday, but that was stinking amazing. I loved it. Uh, it, it felt like a revival, you know? It was like we're reading the book of Acts, you know, 3,000 people, but it was 18, 18, you know? But it's like we had the COVID handicap, so it was about the same. <laughs> Do you think so? Felt like it, right? It was cool. Um, groups, we have currently 282 people in the last season that were part of groups, that were actively engaging in their group. And uh, while we definitely want to see that grow, we're excited that that many people are saying, community is so important to me, and I want to be actively participating in it. Here's our giving uh, stats. Uh, 185 active households are currently giving every 30 days. We run a 30-day snapshot every, every week. So every, every Monday morning, we run a new snapshot for the last 30 days. And this last 30 days was 185 giving, active giving units, active households giving. What that means is, and that's by the way, and this is just the truth, that's below average. And what we know is our church has been focused on reaching people outside the faith and outside the church and we will continue to be focused on reaching people outside the faith and outside the church. And one of the realities of that is that our giving numbers, we have to work harder on them because giving is not normal to people in our culture, right? And so it's a new thing. It takes a long time to develop that discipline and to have that faith. And, and so, you know, that, that's something that God has always uh, helped. I mean, we've always, God's always provided. What's interesting is our income versus expenses right now 95% of our expenses are being covered by our income. What does that mean? That means thank God for uh, operating reserves. And thank God that we have a better operating reserve right now than we've ever had in our church's history. And God has provided, you know? And some special giving, um, some help that we got, that God has provided. So we're in a good position now to ramp back up. And that's why I'm excited and what I wanna uh, fire you up about is, is what's coming. And so here's what I want to tell you, okay? We have gotten survival mode figured out. We know how to do this. We could go for a long time on survival mode. But I don't think any of you signed up to be part of a church that stays in survival mode, right? None of us want to lay our head down on the pillow for the last time being like, I'm so glad I just survived. <laughs> no, we want to squeeze every drop of life we can out of our destiny, right? And out of what God has put our church here for in this amazing city. We scaled back momentarily, but listen, where we want to go and why is this, is we're now ready, set, set, we're set, we're ready to pursue a bolder, bigger vision. And I want to share a little bit about what that's going to be. I want us to, to exceed our pre-COVID attendance. Don't you in person? Don't you want to see us exceed that? Don't you? No. Okay, I was just, just checking. I mean, yeah. Like, wouldn't it be great if we had to add more services and find overflow seating and figure something out about more space and, and all of that in person and then listen, listen. I wanna see us double or triple our online reach. Wouldn't it be great if there were thousands of people with, we we're hooking in the water and we're saying, hey, maybe you don't care about Jesus, but maybe you care about your marriage or your finances. And maybe you'd listen to a little two-minute thing about that. Maybe you're interested in making your life better. And we know how to introduce you to the person, the God, who can do that. And that's, our, that's how we do that, right? And then, and then people that are engaging online, that they, they can't, for whatever reason, they can't be here in person. And we can have, people can build community online. Did you know that? And they are. I, I want to see us put every single person on mission, everyone on mission. Not a quarter of us, not a tenth of us, but everybody on mission I wanna see us be a force for good, for the gospel, in our city and beyond. I, I, I love when we can see like one of our school partnerships and they say, you guys are saving our lives. They say, thank you for what you're doing. You know, something that, that changes our school, changes our city, the, the teachers can go on because of what you've done. We wanna be that kind of place. We gotta have the capacity to do that if we're gonna be able to do that on a bigger scale. And here's why, here's why this matters so much. I wanna show you this, did you know? This is staggering, okay? Our, our area, our metro area, to reach average church saturation or faith saturation, 
average, in other words, to be on par with most American cities, and this comes from Mark Estes at uh, Manor House Church, a friend and an amazing mentor, we would need to plant right now, like right now, 9,100 churches of 100 people in our metro area right now. That's a million people. That's insane. That's insane. Portland is widely considered one of the most religiously unaffiliated cities in America. It's, it's, it's called the, the capital of atheism. Why? I don't know, maybe, maybe our light needs to shine a little brighter. You know? Maybe we need to be a little bolder. I mean, maybe we need to be people who go like, I'm going to stop waiting for somebody else to do this, and I'm going to stop you know, making excuses, and it's time for us to do something bigger. It's time for us to get back to this, right? I think COVID needs to come, the, the COVID mentality of what life is needs to come to an end in our minds, and we need to get aggressive and assertive again about where God is sending us, and, and here's what I want, here's what I want, to, I want to tell you is this, is our neighbors need us now, and that you know, we, we shouldn't and won't stop until every man, woman, and child in our metro area gets a chance to hear, see, and understand the gospel. Don't you think so? Because I'll bet you there's people who've never really heard the gospel, who've never really understood that Jesus loves them. And apparently, there's a lot of them in our city. But that wouldn't even close the gap. That would just get us to the national average. So what's the real deficit? It's, it's way bigger than that. We got so much work to do. Here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna meet people where they are and walk them to Jesus. That's what we do. We are tour guides. We walk people to Jesus. And that happens normally one person at a time, right? This is hard work. This is slow work. And, and so we, we need to keep at it. Uh, once in a while, I'll get an email or a criticism that says, you guys are too focused on the people who aren't here yet. And I say, thank you. Thank you. That, I, I receive that compliment. I receive that affirmation that we are staying true to the mission of helping people find and follow Jesus. This is our, this is our pathway. Worship is connected to God in salvation. Community is connected to God's family. Mission is connected to calling. This is what we're gonna keep doing. And if you're not sure where you're at on that, that's why we wanna partner with you. If you'd like to grow in your understanding of salvation, we wanna partner with you. If you wanna grow in your ability to be really in community and to share community with others, we wanna partner with you. If you're not sure about your mission, your calling, are you really activated in that? We wanna partner with you. That's the whole point. God has a dream for your life, and that's what this team is for. We wanna do this together. And so I'm so excited uh, about that. Now here's what's standing in the way. I wanna, I wanna share with you real quickly, three things could stop us. And if we're not careful, they will. Doubt could stop us. Did God really call me to do something significant with my life? Did God really call our church to be this bold? Is it, is it gonna work out? What if we get it wrong? I mean, there's all those questions, right? What overcomes doubt? Faith. Faith overcomes doubt. So we have to be people of faith to go like, hey, it's, it's now or never. Let's do this. Let's go big. Let's go all in. Let's get serious about the gospel and our calling. A second thing that could slow us down would be delay. Like where you say, not right now. It's been a season. I mean, I'm tired. Like, hey, I want to serve. I, I want to give. I, I, I want to learn my spiritual gifts, but man, I mean, I'm kind of tired. Like, it's not the right time. When is the right time gonna be? I found that opportunities expire. And if we're standing at the, at the edge of the Jordan River, I don't want anyone else to take my place in crossing that river. I, I don't wanna look back later and be like, ah, dang, had the chance, didn't do it. Delay could stop us if we let it. And then here's the third one, division. Division could stop us. Do you know how easy it is to divide a church? It's easy. Could be a, could be a mask, right? Could be a word. Could be an idea. Could be a person. Could be an event. And it's, and it's a shame. 
Jesus said, they'll know that I'm real when you're one. And that's our call, is to be united, not to let anything divide us. It should be a cold day in hell before we'd let Satan divide our church, right? Yeah. So I want to talk about how we move forward, and here's how. It's you. You are the dream team. It is you. It is an army. It is you fully activated, absolutely engaged in giving your time, your talent, your treasure. It is us going like, we're not going to be an anemic army. We're going to be powerful. We're going we're to bring everything to bear on this mission, this calling, this season, this absolutely divine moment right now, the best moment, the most amazing moment in history of my life, I think, of our modern time. To go big with the gospel is right now. And we do this by getting together and saying we're going to do it. Now, I want to, I want to, say, I want to talk about money for just a minute, just for a minute. I want to just say a couple of words, and, and then I'll move on. But some of you have been so generous that I, I, all I have to say to you is thank you. My goodness, if it weren't for you, <laughs> we could not be sitting here. So thank you. Amazing. Some of you, you'd look at, at, at your giving financially through Westside, and you'd say, eh, there's probably a next step I could take there. And maybe God's blessed you, and you could say, you know, I could give an extra hundred or a thousand dollars. Or I could take my giving and regulate it, make it, you know, I could, or I could increase the, you know, my, my, my recurring giving. You'd say, I could, I could probably take a next step there. And some of you might say, I've never started, and the truth is, you've been so hung up on the amount that you just haven't done anything about it. And so I would just encourage you, start somewhere. Do something. The amount isn't as important as the movement. You know, see what God is like. Taste and see. And he's going to inspire you. He's going to inspire you so much. So I encourage you to take a step forward. Here's, here's what I want to encourage all of you to do, and those of you who are streaming in, is to join the dream team. Join the dream team. I mean, it's awesome. We are building this thing to add value. And I, all the people that are here are receiving this value tonight, and I'm excited about it. Um, in the next little while, you're going to have a chance, all of us, to get involved in groups. They're starting. Our sign-ups just started this week. You, you know, that's a chance to get involved in community. You're going to have a chance to, to write out your own spiritual growth plan at our, at our Getting Started workshop coming up on the 13th. You're going to have a chance to uh, take your next bold Step This fall, we're going to be doing a six-week spiritual growth emphasis for our whole church, okay? It's coming this fall. We're going to go deep on it, and we're going to get ourselves ready for next year. I think 2022 is going to be our best year ever, and we want to get ready for it. Yeah. So, so consider this fall boot camp, okay? And we're going to do this. We're going to get the army ready, and, and then we're going, to, we're going to have a plan. We're going to have a plan for next year for our individual lives, and I cannot wait to unpack it with you, to live it with you, to be in the foxhole with you, you know, to be, to be digging, uh, digging through this thing with you. And I think God is up to some wonderful stuff. Here's what I love that God is doing. Listen to this. Here's why you're so important. Because Paul said, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. And that's what we're after. So I want to pray to wrap up this part of our time together. God, thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.